Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and I review fountain pens and related things, and today it is a fountain pen. This is the Zizos Urbanite 2. It is on loan for this review from a kind subscriber. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to share with you what I think about this pen. The Zizos is from a company in Sugarland, Texas. The pen itself produced in Germany with a German nib that we'll look at in, in the overview and everything. Uh, kind of an interesting pen. Uh, if you can see the materials, this has some really neat materials in the pen, but I'm going to share with you what I think. I'm going to share with you a couple of thoughts that the owner of the pen shared with me, and we'll do a writing test and all that good stuff. Let's, let's just go ahead and flip that camera and dive into all that. Okay, so when you first get your Zizo Urbanite 2, you're going to notice the box, and this is a faux crocodile alligator, something like that finish on this box and it opens up like a 60s Lincoln Continental with suicide doors you see there and you have your pen and yes what what is that a converter and four ink cartridges so let's take the pen out of that box set that aside for just a second you'll notice below is some of the documentation the guarantee card a normal little information card and there you go. Okay, and as we look at the pen itself, you will notice, as I turn the pen, a great deal of sparkle and chatoyancy within, especially the teal, and where there is silver and gray. Do you see that? So as you turn the pen at first, you don't notice it as much because of that checkered pattern, but then as you look closely as it turns, really, is nicely done and nicely polished and finished. I have no real qualms about the finish of this pen and it has a nice uh, heft to it as well. The metal bits are chromed and you have this blind end cap here at the end of the barrel. Very, very simple. Working your way down to these bands and then of course the chromed bit at the top of the cap. The clip is, I think, a nice shape, nicely done. It uh, is not just a, a copycat of something else. It's just kind of a nice, simple design. Very stiff. This is a strong clip. It does seem to go in and out of the pocket okay, although I haven't done that much at all. Uh, but that's, I think, because it has a nice curve to that. Otherwise, it would be too stiff, but it seems to work okay. On the band, you have, of course, the Zizo name, that's the company, and then Urbanite 2 is the model, and you keep going, and this is a limited edition, and it is very tiny, it is numbered. I think it'd be easier to see this on my TV later and tell you what that number would be without my reading glasses here, but uh, very nicely done. I think the polish and, and finish is well done on the outside of the pen, and it has a nice heft to it. Boy, that looks good, this section right here in that lighting, doesn't it? Just really, really pretty cool. So, unscrew the cap, and I, well, I guess I should have counted those every now and then. I do forget that. That's one and two and a quarter, right at two and a quarter. So for those of you uh, where that matters, then that gives you some information. It does have a chromed metal section and uh, it has a gold-plated nib. The nib is German. I could not find exactly who made this nib, but after I was writing with it for a while, it just kept feeling familiar, very familiar, both in its size, its shape. Of course, that scrolling can be common across a few different nib makers, uh, but it just, there was something about it that just seemed familiar. This is a medium, and the owner of the pen and I both agree that it writes more like a fine to medium fine than uh, a medium, but it just kept reminding me of something, and that's I, I wasn't I wasn't even writing with the pen, didn't even have it around, and just out of nowhere, my brain I guess finished processing the question and went, you know, that sure feels an awful lot like this Twisby, 
This is my Twisby Eco, which of course has a Yovo nib, which apparently needs to be uh, wiped clean before going on camera. Uh, but you will notice, even though they are at different depths within their sections, that they are really not identical, but quite similar in uh, the dimensions of the shoulders, the shoulder to the, to the actual riding tip, uh, length and then of course if we took this apart which I'm not going to take uh, somebody else's pin apart here uh, then uh, I think we would find uh, those dimensions very similar as well so I don't know for a fact that it's Yovo uh, but the Yovo nib on my Twisby Eco is the same in some dimensions enough to make me suspect that that might be the case. If anybody can confirm or deny, then uh, that would be helpful in the comments. But that's that's what it reminds me of in uh, both appearance and in the way that it writes. So I thought that was kind of interesting. It does have, of course, a plastic section. And uh, getting back to the grip section, it is metal and it is chromed. It does, of course, have this kind of a checkerboard uh, pattern, which echoes the material of the pen, but also probably aids in uh, limiting the uh, slippage here in the grip. Now, one thing about it, it, it tapers down enough and doesn't have any sort of a stop. It tapers down narrow enough that uh, even with that, I didn't have any problems writing with this pen, but it's, it's thinner than my own personal preference. And of course, that is going to uh, be a personal thing about the size of, and it's really kind of weird because some pins, that taper makes a difference too. Some pins can be this thin and be very comfortable. Other pins uh, with the taper, you may feel as though, whether you do or not, that you're going to have that, that slippage problem. I think they tried to negate that or at least uh, diminish it with that pattern, and I think that helps. I think it does give you a better purchase on the grip than if it were just slick metal, obviously. Uh, matte would probably help with that even more. It does have a step down in threads here, but the, it, that's far enough back that the step down did not uh, bother me, interfere with writing at all. And those threads, because they're wider threads of a softer sort, then it's, they're, they're comfortable. No issue there whatsoever. Open that up and you would have a converter in the pen, but I used a cartridge. This is, is not my pen, so I just wanted to use a test cartridge, but uh, there you go. You could easily store an extra if you've got shorts in there. Back up in here, there's plenty of length in the pen for that. It might rattle. It's a long pen, which is nice. See, you even uh, unpost it, you have no trouble whatsoever with the length of the pen. And I do like that dimension. It's, it's a comfortable pen and uh, nice weight, nice balance. And uh, like I said, I, I like the finish and the build, but finish and build aren't all there are to a pen. Let's see how the pen writes. Wait just a second, before we get to that writing test, let's do a size comparison. I almost forgot. This is, of course, that Urbanite 2. This is the Twisby Eco. Very similar in length, different in uh, uh, diameter, but that gives you some idea. This is, move that down, this is the Wingsung 601. Boy, do I like that pen. Uh, just, I can't get enough of those. I now have like four, and there's another color I'll probably get to. Let's see here. This is the uh, Keiko Edge, which, by the way, update for those who might want to know, still no cracking, still holding on, doing great. Does have dry out issues sometimes, but that's the only issue I've had with it. The Lamy Safari. Okay, so that's very similar in length and even pretty similar in uh, diameter, just completely different in weight and uh, in writing style. And a Pilot Prera, which is just really nothing like that pen. Uh, okay, so there is one thing I forgot to mention, that is this. Uh, the pen, it does post, but you have to press it fairly firmly to do that, and I don't want to mess up the finish of someone else's pen, so I'm just going to write with this unposted. It's well balanced. I like the feel of this pen unposted. Anyway, this is the Zizo Urbanite 2, and this is, again, 
a medium pen. However, uh, I think that it writes like a fine, uh, maybe a fine to medium, but really mostly just like a fine. Uh, definitely leaning this direction. And then this is just a uh, really just a generic blue international short cartridge that I got again through uh, Birmingham pens, but they no longer sell those. I find that it writes nice and smooth, and uh, I think you can tell that listening. I'm going to be quiet, write a little bit more just so that you can hear, and uh, hopefully the, the traffic outside doesn't interfere too much. There you go. So I think the wetness is quite nice for a uh, fine to medium nib, and uh, so not bad at all there. Like I said, I think it's nice and smooth. You're really not expecting a lot of variation because this is just a normal steel nib. I'm certainly not going to press it that way, but you can see that there is just a little bit of a, a natural line variation there that I think is, is normal for a nib like this so you get you get a little bit of that let's see here just a little bit more so that you can see that was me i felt my grip lift the pin a little bit there not the pin i haven't had any hard starts no skipping it's been perfectly reliable that was me again um no issues there whatsoever. I think, actually, you know, I mentioned that it reminds me of that Eco. Why don't I just compare it while we're there? Uh, I guess it's just kind of that thing, you know, you, it's a mystery. You want to know, is that, is that, is that that kind of a nib? And I think you see this is a medium and it is more medium and the ink is going to give a different impression, but kind of similar. If I had handy i don't sure like that ink uh the uh the fine the twist beef and fine that i have i think it would look even much closer and this is a very wet uh saturated and and not a apples to apples ink but very very similar i do notice a little bit more uh audible feedback from that eco and i think that is um, probably more because of the materials of the pen than the nib itself. But uh, I don't know. I find I find them the feel, which is hard to convey over video. The feel makes me think possibly uh, that's where that comes from. But like I said, maybe not. If you know, then that's uh, certainly be helpful. If you want to want to share that in the comments. Overall, let's let's do some. Uh, I don't know if pros and cons are the right word, but that's what I'm going to use pluses and minuses of the pen. Well, that kind of sang across the paper, didn't it? Uh, pros. I think the material, that's the first thing that's going to come to my mind, is I do like that material. Uh, there is nice, this is a different lighting than earlier. There is some nice chatoyancy in that material and for some folks that's that's a big selling point on a pen something you want to know uh, that you want to have in your pen so if, if that's something you're looking for i think that makes it a nice gift pen in that regard because you know there there are pens that you'd write with every day and then there are pens that you might say you know i think i'd like to give that to somebody i think that'd be great i think it'd be a nice pen that way and i think that's kind of part of, of the appeal of, a, of the Zizo pen and part of, of why they do what they do. Um, I do like the nib. It is uh, just kind of a reliable, and it writes a nice line. Uh, it, is, it is thin for a medium. Uh, it does write more as a fine, but I, I do like that nib. Uh, and I like the... Uh, the heft of the pen. And I'm not one that thinks that a pen has to have heft to it for it to be quote unquote a luxury or premium 
pen, I think that depends more on the materials. Sometimes lightness is a luxury and a, and a premium, you know, in an aluminum pen, for example. It just, it, it kind of depends. Uh, but this has a nice heft and balance to it. Cons. Um, I think that the owner of the pen said as a special edition, this pen was closing in on $100. The uh, similar material, or maybe the same material, uh, but in just a, a normal edition, is around $70, and it's called the Ocean. I think, you know, if you what would you compare that to? That would be about like a, uh, a Twisby uh, a vac pen, uh, a Twisby, what do you call it, the Prussian Blue 580, uh, is a, you know, they're kind of knocking around the same uh, price range. This is uh, certainly a more expensive material than a Twisby, so I, I think that makes the price uh, kind of fair, but uh, I am going to put that. I think that's one that uh, maybe it could be just a little bit uh, more competitive, but again, I, I don't know. Um, it's it's kind of sort of in the right window there, but if, the, if there was going to be a con and, and the owner of the pen said, uh, you know, kind of along those lines that he felt the price should come down just a little bit. So I'm going to put that there. Um, what else? I, I'm going to say... Uh, just that metal grip, even though I do think that uh, this, uh, the marking, the, the grooves here, they it helps. It does help. And so it's not crazy slippery. Uh, it's just whether or not you like, not everybody likes a metal grip, but I found it, it functions pretty well. But I'm going to put that there on that side of the column. And uh, I think... Let's see, anything else? It did. I'm going to give them credit. Oh, I'm, I'm always giving them credit. They gave a uh, converter in the box. By the way, I'm starting to wonder if somebody's listening. I noticed that the new Twisby uh, swipe, which I just got a notification, is out in my mailbox. Uh, comes with two converters. What, you think they're listening to us? They might be listening to us. Anyway, uh, this one does come with one, so I'm going to definitely give them credit for that. Uh, another, uh, if I was going to do another con, uh, maybe just that I don't know where that nib's from. I know the country, but I don't know the maker. Uh, just because uh, I do buy pins sometimes. If I find out, you know, yes, that is a Yovo, and I can get a 1.1 millimeter Yovo stub, it makes a difference uh, between just German stub. Uh, so that. That, that makes a difference, and so it would be really nice to know uh, for sure where that comes from. But overall, I have positive impressions of the pen. I like the material. I like the shape. Uh, you know, I could nitpick uh, I, different font. I don't like different fonts on things like this. Uh, I like them all to be matching fonts, but that's getting, that's getting really picky. People who know me personally really well might think that I would have put that down uh, because fonts are a thing. Don't you use any Comic Sans on anything that's professional. I'll come after you. Uh, but, you know, uh, maybe maybe that. Uh, there's another company I have issues with there named uh, Monteverde. Uh, needs to update their font. But, you know, again, that's getting kind of kind of picky. I do. I like the pen. And thank you very much to the owner of the pen for sharing this with us because I think that's really cool. And it's, it's a beautiful material. I like that part. All right. God bless you. Have a great week. And I hope you're doing well.